Hey guys, what is going on? I have a special gameplay for you guys today. This is my first start with Tom Seaver. Finally got him from the Captain Store. Um, and yeah, this is my first start with him. We're playing a World Series opponent, so this will be a really good test for Seaver and seeing if he's really worth that uh, 99 rating they give him. So, this first inning, um, we do get things started there with Ellsbury, a single up the middle. Um, I'm going to try to focus this gameplay more on Seaver, but I do want to show you know the scoring highlights and whatnot. And then Kenny Powers, created play, rips one into the gap. And that's going to score Jacoby. Man, I love having Jacoby, that speed, and bat from the left-hand side. He's just a beast. So he scores all the way from first. And I really like my team now. I mean, we just got a lot more speed. And then Pools comes up. He throws a slider away. We're facing Strasburg, by the way. Um, I'm loving Pools, guys. I, I've never hit this well with any other player. And he rips a bomb to left field. Like, he just has that just extreme power where even if it's down and away, he still has the muscle and power to pull it. Um, so an amazing card. So we go up three to nothing. Then Maurer comes up, rips a single in the middle. I love the Maurer card too. Um, I really don't know how anybody can complain about Maurer. Yeah, his blocking is only 65, but if you don't throw pitches in the dirt, you'll be fine. I mean, yeah, every now and then he, he will, you know, miss a ball. Um, but I think defensively he's been fine. He throws out runners. He jumps on those dribblers. Does a good job overall. So now we have two on. We have Beltre up, and this Beltre guys, I, I don't know. I, I love this card. It gets the job done. I hit well lefties. I hit well against righties. Uh, and, of course, right here, just showing you guys how much I love that card. He hits a three-run bomb. We go up six to nothing. So we're giving Tom Seaver a lot uh, a lot of runs to work with. So hopefully we can hold it down. And then each row, just doing what each row does. Like Each row gets the widest variety of hits I've ever seen out of any card in this game. And he can occasionally hit for power, too. So I'm loving the each row card. And he finally gets out of inning, but... I can't, I can't complain. Six runs, so hopefully Seaver does the job for me. Um, again, I'm playing a World Series opponent, so this should be a really good test for Seaver. Now, I used Seaver a lot last year, and I think the main difference being is that his walks per nine, um, among a few other things, is just a little bit better this year. His per nines overall are just better. Uh, so to begin the game, we do get a ground out to third, and here we try to turn a double play. We get another ground out, though, but it's too fast. And next batter throw a change up down I was working a lot of change ups against this guy we get it to 1-1 count I tested him a few times early on and he made me pay so we throw a slider in on the hands pretty much couldn't pitch my opponent inside so I mean but that's okay because Seaver has an amazing change up and slider uh, so he has runners on the corners already posing a threat against my newly acquired 99 overall so hopefully Seaver can get out of this um, we uh, he hits a hard hit ground ball to second base but my creative player covers some ground over there I love the creative player at second and we get out of the first inning with no runs allowed so it's looking okay so far for Seaver we throw a fastball in the outer half my opponent probably just missed it flies out the center but anyways this card compared to last year um, if you guys use the Seaver from last year you like them you'll like them again they're pretty similar cards um, there's not many huge differences I, I just I think the control is a little bit better. He throws about 96, 95, 96, every now and then 97. So he can throw hard enough, but his changeup's amazing. His slider's amazing. And I challenged my opponent here. I think that was Corey Seager. Maybe that's, I, I can't tell. I think it was Seager, but he hits a bomb. So we do give up a home run, um, and it is now 6-1. to one. But, yeah, if you like the Seaver card from last year, you'll like this card. You'll love this card. Um, so far, it's definitely a top-10 pitcher in the game. Top five, I don't know yet. As uh, he does rip another single, we challenge him there with a high fastball, and he rips a single of Posey. But yeah, I don't know if it's a top five pitcher quite yet. It's really hard to gauge who are actually the top five pitchers. It really comes down to personal preference and how you pitch with him, what ballparks you play at. Um, I mean, it's really, really tough to say, but it's definitely a top ten card. Like his control, his pitch break, his he's got the velo, he's got everything. As we turn a nice double play to get out of the inning, so we have allowed one run in two innings. So hopefully we can start pitching a little bit better. My opponent is a pretty good hitter, though, I will say that. Really good hitter, World Series opponent. And this is definitely a good gauge to see how uh, effective Seaver can be against World Series opponents because that's the whole reason I went out and got him. So if you guys are thinking about getting Seaver, I will say this. Um, if it's between Pools and Seaver, and you already have Rizzo, you already have Votto, and you do not have the time to grind or you do not have the tickets, a Seaver rips a single. I guess he can hit two, by the way. Um, I, I would definitely recommend playing it safe and getting the pitching. Go with Seaver. Now, if you have the lu the luxury of getting two, I would probably go pull holes and then Seaver. Um, and then Cespedes. Uh, as Cespedes rips a single there, so we're going to score two more runs. 
And we're going to give our boy Seaver some more run support. Uh, but yeah, like I was saying, if you guys... I really feel like you can hit with anybody in this game. Like, you don't need to go out and get Cespedes... Or Cespedes isn't an good example because he's cheap. But you don't need the Jacobis. You don't need the Mowers. Um, you don't need the Beltrons. You don't need all those cards. If you can hit, you can hit. But if you really need the pitching and your ERA is like 3.6, 3.5 and you're just getting to the World Series, or you're still struggling in the Championship Series, get this card. It's worth it. Um, as great as Poulos is, in my opinion, he's probably the best first baseman. Get the Seaver card. I think it's the smarter choice. It's going to add more depth to your rotation, and I think that is really the most important thing in the World Series because most people can hit. Uh, what separates you know the really good players from the great players, in my opinion, is the ability to be able to pitch to these World Series opponents with super quick bats, um, their ability to... you know adjust on the fly as the game goes on. So you have to have a pitcher that has the tools to get them out. Um, at the end of the day, it still comes down to how well you can pitch with them and how well you can execute your interfaces. But pitcher like Seaver can definitely get the job done. So that's just what I'm going to say about that. It, it's kind of weird because I do think Pulse is by far the best first baseman. I might be a little biased. But, yeah, so that's I'm just going to leave it at that. You guys know at the end of the day what decision you should do. Um, and if you guys want to ask me on Twitter what you think you should do, I'll try to help you out. But that's my perspective on it. So back to the game. Uh, we're in the fourth inning. Seaver's doing pretty well. Control, not an issue. Um, I'm starting to slow down my opponent's bat a little bit, so the fastball is becoming a little bit more effective and on the hands. But we're mainly still sticking with that change-up slider combo. I threw a few curveballs. Um, I don't throw too many curveballs in a game. Probably less than 5% of my pitches are curveballs. Uh, but yeah, if you Seaver, um, there's a curveball there. Seaver just worked that change-up slider. They're amazing. And then he's got the fastball to back it up. As we get through four innings, only allowing one run. Next inning, we're going to try to get Seaver some more run support. It's 8-1 to one at this point. We have Cespedes up again. By the way, I don't know if you guys noticed earlier, Jacoby got hurt, so I'd put Cespedes, Cespedes in. And he's done some good things. He hits a two-run bomb here, so we go up 10-1. to one. And yeah, it's looking good. It's looking like we're going to get Seaver's first win. Um, at this point, I still want to make sure he can get through uh, a couple more innings without giving up runs because my goal is to shut down opponents. You know, I show no mercy when I get up. I don't just groove in strikes. My goal is to not allow them to score. You know, I really take pride in my ERA um, and shutting, you know, good hitters down. I really think it's it's definitely a challenge. But, I mean, I, it's just this game has evolved a lot over the past few years, basically. Um, people are getting a lot better at hitting. So pitching is becoming more and more and more important, and I think it's kind of a lost art and skill in this game. People think if you can just hit, which is kind of true if you can hit, you'll be able to get to the World Series more than likely. But if you want to get high rated, like top 10, top 15, you have to be able to pitch. You have to know when to mix it up. You have to know how to pitch to your opponents. You have to know how to read their bats. So we throw a pitch away here. Uh, that was Trevor's story, by the way. And he flies out to right field. So we're just trying to get... Uh, through five innings, we throw a changeup. We threw a lot of changeups this game. And Beltre makes the play. Beltre is amazing. Not many third basemen probably would have made that play. So casual. Um, but yeah, I really tailor my team around defense and pitching. Of course, pretty much stacked at this point. Pulo sits another bomb of Chapman. And uh, so you're seeing um, you're seeing both of the you know, level 50 captain rewards tear it up this game. Um, so yeah, let me know, guys, if you've used Seaver or if you got Pujols or Ted or Greenkey. Let me know in the comments which you know level 50 rewards you guys obtained, uh, and let me know why, um, and let me know how they're doing for you, if you like them or not. Uh, now, I plan to do a Seaver review as soon as possible, probably a few more days. Uh, I did pitch another game afterwards with them, so probably get you know four or five more starts to get a really good feel for how uh, good I think this card is in the game. And uh, we're up 11-1 at this point, so we just need a few more outs. And I do want you guys to pay attention to this next play. Um, we go, we fall behind 3-1 and one here, so we try a lo low fastball. Not a low fastball, a changeup. We hung it, though. We got really, really lucky there. So full count here. <clears throat> We're going to try to... I don't remember what I threw. Oh, a slider in on the hands. And he falls for it. Now watch his heads up play. I let the ball drop. I got the out at first because filter's slower. And then we make the double play. So that was really heads up play. I thought that was really cool to end the game. Um... But yeah, Seaver's great, guys. I, I really think he is worth the 99 rating or the 5,500 tickets, whatever. Um, if you liked him last year, you'll definitely like him this year. And do not let the 90 overall Seaver be a good gauge for how 
uh, effective this card can be. The 90 Seaver is not even close to this card. Yeah, they have the same delivery. Um, they both have good changeups, but this card's VLO and break and per nines are so much better. Uh, anyways, guys, uh, thanks for watching the game. We'll try to have that Seaver review within the next few days. Maybe it'll come out early next week. But again, thanks for watching. This is Carnal Number 5, signing out. Peace.